We're going to try something new today. We're going to have one of the students do a presentation. I gave you the option of doing your project as a report or a presentation. So uh, why don't you come on up and I hope I didn't shut down what you need. <laughs> Hello, uh, welcome to ELCT 752, I guess. I'm Adam Barkley. I'll be doing the first of the project presentations. Let me see if I can find the PowerPoint presentation. Sorry, I closed that out. That's all right. Okay, uh, my topic is active power for factor correction of line-connected rectifiers uh, using some power electronic converter, uh, boost converter in this case. Uh, we'll go through why this is a significant problem, some definitions of power factor, um, maybe some stuff that you have not been exposed to before. Uh, the concept of AC to DC power supplies, rectifiers in general, and why they're such a problem. Uh, introduce a boost power factor corrector, a converter. And then we'll do two case studies, uh, both done in VTB, simulation environment developed here at USC. Uh, They'll both be 900 watt rectifiers with and without power factor correction and we'll show you the results and how the power factor correction improves things. Uh, then we'll introduce uh, some limits, uh, IEC 61003-2. Uh, it's an international electrotechnical uh, commission. It's just a standard that, that talks about the harmonic content limits. And then we'll provide a summary. Okay, first, power factor, as you know it, is the ratio between the real power delivered and the apparent power. And this is the, the apparent power is the, the power that the utility company has to provide, and it must flow through all of the transmission and distribution equipment. So uh, you would like for all of the power to be real power. Uh, so for large customers, the utility company penalizes you for low power factor. Ideally, you want a power factor equal to one. If you have a completely linear system, uh, the, all the currents and voltages are sinusoidal, so you can talk about fundamental frequency quantities only. Then the power factor is just the cosine of the angle between the voltage and the current waveforms. However, as we start having more nonlinear loads that produce these current harmonics or voltage harmonics, you have to derate the power factor, the displacement power factor, by the distortion. So you can see that the true power factor is the displacement power factor divided by the square root of 1 plus the THD squared. THD is the total harmonic distortion. It's a ratio of the, the power uh, content of the harmonic versus the fundamental. And you can see that true power factor depends on both displacement and distortion. So if we want low, uh, high true power factor, we need the voltage and current waveforms to be in phase, and we need uh, no harmonics, basically, sinusoidal quantities only. Okay, so this is a typical rectifier. You can see uh, an AC source on the left here, uh, a full wave bridge rectifier, and uh, bulk capacitance and then some load. I'm just representing this as a generic load. It could be a resistor or it could be uh, another converter like in a motor drive or something. Uh, this process of rectification is nonlinear. Uh, you can think that you'll only have you'll only have current fr taken from the line whenever the line voltage is higher than the bus voltage and one of these diodes is, or two of these diodes is forward biased. Otherwise you'll take zero current from the line what you see is basically a very pulse-like input current. Uh, the input current has a lot of distortion. It's rich in harmonics. We'll look at the spectrum. Uh, and these storage elements lead to displacements in the voltage and current waveforms. Uh, what's tricky about this is the load impedance actually matters. Uh, as you have a heavier load, the voltage in the capacitor will tend to dip down between the peaks and the 60 hertz waveforms, and the conduction angle will actually increase, and the spectrum may change. Uh, and also the load may be time varying, so the harmonic content may change. It may make it harder to properly design, uh, let's say, notch filters if you want to do uh, some, some harmonic correction. So we'll introduce a, a boost 
uh, power factor correction pre-regulator. It, it's between the full wave bridge rectifier and the bulk capacitor. Uh, this is typically chosen, this boost converter, because it's a current fed converter. That is, the inductor current at the input can't change instantaneously and you can control it somewhat by varying the duty cycle here. So this pre-regulator has two main goals. It must make the instantaneous input current proportional to the line voltage. And if it can do that, the line sees basically a resistor. That's the definition of resistance. Uh, a secondary goal is to make this bus voltage in the bulk capacitance some constant value and since it's a boost converter it must be higher than the peak value of the line voltage. Uh, the downside of this is that it requires a control system so you must have some kind of digital controller uh, and it's fairly complicated we'll get into that in a second but if you can do it right it provides some decoupling between the load and the line that is this may be a universal input say it could work in Japan or Europe or with different input frequencies and different voltages. Typically it's between 85 volts AC and something like 265 volts AC. Uh, and it's not susceptible to changes in the load. So if you have a motor starting or something, uh, you can maintain the bus voltage at whatever value you, you program in. Okay, we'll look at the case study number one. This is a, a schematic NVTB you can see an AC voltage source. This is a, just a sinusoidal source and a, a, a control dependent voltage source. I've modeled in some Thevenin resistance. I'm measuring the current with a current sensor. Here's a full wave rectifier. It's using as ideal a diodes as I could find in VTB. Uh, and then there's the filter capacitor and load resistor. I've chosen the load resistor to give 900 watts uh, at basically 170 volts bus voltage and I've chosen the capacitor to give about a 10 percent voltage ripple and this is the results of the simulation this is the output voltage in yellow and the input voltage in cyan here and you can see the output voltages the capacitor is charged whenever the input voltage is, is larger than the capacitor voltage and this is a full wave rectifier so actually the negative that becomes the absolute value and, and charges again here and this is about a 10% ripple. If we look at the input current that corresponds to this, you can see basically peaks that correspond to when, when the output voltage was increasing. You see positive and negative peaks, and the value is something like 40 amps peak. Uh, then I've imported this into MATLAB so we can do some post-processing, and I've just rescaled the current here so you, it's more comparable. You can kind of see what's going on here. Okay. Things to note, this, the current is, is asymmetric, so it leads the line voltage. And like we said before, it's, it's very pulse-like. Uh, you could roughly approximate this as a rectangular pulse. Then if you do the Fourier transform of this, uh, you would expect to see something that looks like a sink. And you can see the envelope of this looks sink-like. There's no even harmonics, it's all odd harmonics. But what you can see is there's, this is the, the fundamental here at about nine and a half amps, and there's significant content at all other harmonics, which you don't want to have. 